German Dance in B Major by Haydn. This is in tri a triple meter piece in 3-4 time. This is a piece that also requires bouncy wrists. I think every piece so far in this uh, Masterpieces with Flair book that we've been going through has required bouncy wrists. Uh, so remember, firm fingers, but loose wrists and like a dribbling motion. And then there's also a lot of voicing throughout here where the right hand's going to be louder than the left hand. Okay, so taking a look at the A section. The A section measures one through eight and has a repeat sign. Uh, we have an appoggiatura at measure seven. I wanna talk about that first. So in the piece before in Bagatelle by Diabelli, we had a grace note and the grace note was a note that you would play like right before the uh, principal note. Um, an appoggiatura, instead you play the grace note, the small note, on the beat and it's emphasized. And then you play the other note, the uh, principal note, afterwards. So the grace note from Diabelli is just a decoration for the principal note. You, you would emphasize the principal note. But for an appoggiatura, the decoration becomes much more prominent. So it actually sounds a lot like just straight eights. And if you look at the book, it writes it out as straight eights too, but you do want to put a little more emphasis on the, the D there. So yes, I think that's the only new thing in this piece compared to the last pieces from this book. Measures one through four, the hands are together, they're the same notes, and my right hand, you're not gonna be able to see all of it because it goes pretty high. After that, you have a little chord progression there. You have D to, I thought this was G major, but then looking at the right hand and seeing that there's an E, it's actually E minor, so it's a, going to the two, not the four. And then this is an A7, so five, seven, one. So one, two, five, seven, one. All right, let's put that. So that would sound like. I do use sneak a little pedal in there. This is from the classical period, which it's not forbidden to use the pedal, but we don't get too pedally. But from this D to this D, because I'm playing it on four, I'm not really stretching and going like that. It's a little uncomfortable. If I played it with five, I could. But I also can just bring the pedal down afterwards and smooth that out. So I'm using it kind of like a filter. The B section, well, first we should practice that left hand chord progression. We have A major, E7, A major, E7, A major. So we are temporarily in A major because this piece is D major and the five of D is A. And so this line, it's doing E7, which does not, and you see the G sharp in the right hand, the E7 does not belong in the key of D. It belongs in the key of A. So this is called a five of five, yeah, or a five seven of five. So this is actually just borrowed from A major. And so, and of course, you know, when you have five seven to one, you have a authentic cadence. So for nine through 12, you're in A major, but then you go back to D, the next line. Something to point out too is once you get to measure 12, you know the whole piece because 13 through 16 are, is the same as five through eight. And we have more appoggiaturas too. We have one at 10. You probably should single these out and work on them on their own at first. Okay, and then of course the one at 15 is a repeat of the one that was at measure seven. So make sure to single out those parts and work on them. It's always good to have an idea of where you're going instead of diving right in. And now I get to play it. Okay, that's it for the German dance in B major. I hope you enjoyed learning this piece and performing it for yourself and for your friends or maybe even your teacher. Happy practicing.